asset protection uh, fits into several of the quadrants, not all of them. If you're an employee, it, you know, you may need asset protection for your other assets. But if you're in small business, if you're an investor, if you own a big business, certainly asset protection is something that has to be considered right from the start. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interview. Hi and welcome to the My Future Business Show. My name is Rick Nusky and today I have with me Garrett Sutton who is a best-selling author and he is also a member of the elite group called Rich Dad Advisors for best-selling author Robert Kiyosaki. How are you Garrett? Good, how are you Rick? Thanks for having me on today. Oh look, it's absolutely my pleasure. I'm sort of I'm, I'm shaking. It's just it's an, going to be an exciting call. I'm very uh, privileged to have you on the call with me today. Well, thank you. It's great that you're educating people, and I look forward to assisting. That's great. Look, uh, I'd love to uh, first talk about you personally and, and your background and what you do when you're not working, because I'd love to dig a, a little bit deeper into the, that side of things. Would you mind sharing with our audience a little bit about yourself? Well, sure. I uh, grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. I went to the University of California at Berkeley, got my degree in business, then crossed the Bay to San Francisco and attended Hastings College of the Law, which is the University of California's law school in San Francisco. Uh, I practiced law in San Francisco and Washington, D.C. And, you know, I'd spent all my summers up at Lake Tahoe and uh, really enjoyed skiing and hiking. And so the time came to make the move, and I, I moved to Reno, Nevada, and it's, it's great. We're close to Lake Tahoe. The skiing is great. I, pr I probably get 30 days a year of skiing in. Very nice. And, uh, yeah, it's just it's a great area to live, and it's sort of getting discovered. Uh, Tesla opened a big factory here, and other companies are moving in. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to get some of the tech companies out of the Bay Area. Uh, moving up to Nevada, which, as many people know, has no state income tax, no corporate tax. It's a really good place to do business. Uh, a, bit, a bit utopian for them, I suspect. That's right. And <laughs> so uh, it's it's been a it's been great. I, I've raised a family here. I have three children who are now in college and uh, a great wife and uh, a good life. So Yep. I have no complaints. Thank you very much for sharing a bit of personal side of uh, your story because I think it adds some, you know, just a bit of body to the call. You know, it's rather than this uh, black and white business stuff, I always like to add that. So thank you very much. I'd, I'd just like to touch on um, your uh, involvement with Sierra Kids Foundation. Can, can you share a little bit about that with us? Sure. Uh, we had a situation uh, with one of our children who, uh, you know, was uh, diagnosed with um, uh, you know, the, he was on the autism spectrum mm -hmm. and uh, there's this program at the University of Nevada that is able to bring kids out of autism. It's uh, called applied behavioral banal uh, analysis and it just, it did the trick for our child and so we wanted to give back. We formed with another uh, group of parents, the Sierra Kids Foundation. We raise money for scholarships so families can afford to go through this program at the Uni University of Nevada. Uh, it's it's life changing. Kids can come out of uh, autism uh, in with this uh, uh, training that is done when they're you know between two and four years old, mm. and uh, so not every family can afford it. So we raise money for scholarships so families can afford uh, to have their kids go through the. Uh, early Childhood Autism Program at the University of Nevada. Well, we'd love to uh, add some links to there and uh, see if we can um, help that cause along. Um, Garrett, I'd love to spin around to this involvement that you have with Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad uh, Advisory Service. How does that come about for you? Well, uh, I just became very fortunate to become associated with Robert Kiyosaki and uh, the Rich Dad Advisor Organization. Um, he was looking for an attorney in Nevada, and a, a friend referred me, and one thing led to another, and I became a Rich Dad Advisor. I've written six books in the Rich Dad Advisor series. I uh, travel around the world with Robert and the other advisors talking about financial education, and it's, it's 
interesting, Rick, that this information is sought by people all over the world. Uh, we've been to South America several times, to Australia. We're going to Australia again in August. Mm -hmm. uh, people are looking for uh, education on financial matters. They don't teach it in school, unfortunately. You have to go out and get this information yourself. Mm. And so being part of an organization that provides access to this kind of information uh, has been really rewarding. And so uh, we've traveled around the world preaching the message of financial education. And it's, an, it's very important. I mean, Robert and yourself are obviously involved with some of the biggest players in the world. You are the biggest players in the world, frankly. And uh, I remember being first exposed to Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and it was just a light bulb moment for me. Then I went on to his cash flow quadrant, which I, you know, I went from the employee to the investor and through all those phases. Is this something that's relevant to our discussion today, the, talking about the four quadrants? Oh, sure. We uh, uh, Asset protection uh, fits into several of the quadrants, not all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're an employee, it's, um, you know, you may need asset protection for your other assets. Mm -hmm. But if you're in small business, if you're an investor, uh, if you own a big business, certainly asset protection is something that has to be considered right from the start. You know, we, like, you know, the, there's a lot of small businesses. You know, generally, our the my future business audience are either beginner entrepreneurs who are just starting on this journey and have very little understanding, knowledge, or exposure to some of the consequences of not being appropriately protected. And then there are the existing business owners who are now starting to realise, oh, look, you know, I need to uh, get my my ducks in a row, as it were, in terms of my legal uh, compliance. What are the different types of uh, legal uh, boundaries that help small businesses? Well, one of the uh, uh, things that the government allows for is for you to set up an entity that has limited liability. Mm -hmm. And this is true around the globe. Yeah. Uh, in the United States, you can operate as a sole proprietor. That's where you just get into business. You don't have to uh, file anything with the state authorities. But as a sole proprietor, you have no asset protection. Mm. By taking that extra step, of forming a corporation or an LLC by being chartered by the state, you have limited liability protection. So let's look at the difference. The sole proprietor, you operate as a plumber. You go out to a job, something bad happens. Mm -hmm. uh, they can not only sue your business and get the truck and all the equipment, but you're personally responsible for that claim. So they can get the equity in your house, uh, the, the, your bank account, uh, other assets. And so the, uh, you want to use the limited liability entity, which if the business gets sued, yes, they can get what's inside the business. Hopefully you have insurance, so it's not an issue. Mm -hmm. But they can't get beyond the corporation or the LLC to get at your personal assets. And so that's why at the start, uh, you want to be thinking about having that corporation or LLC in place so that you have the limited liability uh, protection of an entity. And if we have time, Rick, we can talk about what you have to do to maintain that. Just setting it up isn't enough. There are ongoing corporate formalities that have to be followed so that you maintain that protection as well. Yeah, this this is a very, very deep topic for anybody who's listening today. Just be well aware that um, we're just literally scratching the surface of this topic. And um, I will ask if you wouldn't mind later, Garrett, if you could share your details of where people can find you to get further assistance. But absolutely, I'd love to know how hard it is for somebody to set up an LLC. Well, I guess the first question is, do we set up an LLC or a corporation? Mm -hmm. There are a couple cases. The LLC, uh, Rick, is the most popular entity in the U.S. now. Uh, they were only allowed by Wyoming in, in the late 70s, and by the 1990s, all 50 states had them. Mm -hmm. uh, they offer great asset protection. Uh, they are great for doing business in real estate uh, and holding real estate. And you can have them taxed however you want. They can be taxed as a partnership, as an S-corp, whatever you want. So a lot of people will be using the LLC. There are some cases where you have to use a corporation. An example would be in the state of California. They don't allow people who are real estate brokers or agents 
to operate through an LLC. Mm -hmm. So you, in that situation, you have to operate through a corporation. Uh, so whether it's an LLC or a corporation, you're going to set up one of the two and you're going to consider setting it up in a state that has strong laws, uh, such as Nevada and Wyoming, mm -hmm. and then qualify to do business in your home state. Uh, if you're investing in real estate, you'll set up an LLC in the state where the property is located, and then you'll have that LLC be owned by a Wyoming LLC for the good asset protection. I know it's kind of complicated, but we will we try and make it easy. We offer a free 15-minute consult. So mm -hmm. if you call the office, you can talk to someone about your specific situation and, you know, we'll help you come up with the answer on which is the right entity and structure for you. Um, it's obvious to me that these things are very complex, but this is why you exist, essentially, Garrett, is to help remove all the uncertainty and all that time wasting. And in actual fact, it would be far more cost effective to go to the professionals first off. If you're listening to this call and you want to reach out to Garrett again, we'll share those details a little bit later. But um, yeah, I've done this myself. I've invested in multiple real estates and I I've, I've found that I've made a lot of mistakes along the way. So how are people likely to be able to avoid these these issues when they start up? Is it something that they should contact you even before they start their business? I, I prefer that. Mm -hmm. um, here's the issue, Rick. If you get started, you'll, you'll hear people say, oh, just get started in business. Be a sole proprietor. Don't spend a couple hundred dollars or more on, on an entity. What happens is... People get involved in their, in their business, in the crush of commerce, and they forget to go back and incorporate or set up the LLC. Yep. Then they're in business, they get sued, and they're personally responsible. Once you've been sued, it's too late to set up an LLC uh, for protection. Yep. Uh, so you have to set up the LLC or corporation at the start. So I prefer that people think about it right from the start and you know a lot of people will listen to their cpa and with all due respect to cpa chartered public accountants mm -hmm. uh, you know they you shouldn't listen to a cpa for legal advice you don't want to ask me for le for tax advice <laughs> i won't taxes <laughs> but you know many cpas will say well just just get started and you can set up the entity later and the joke we tell is cpa really stands for can't protect assets. Ah, so, <laughs> very good. Very good. So don't listen to your CPA for legal advice, but you want a team. That's what uh, Robert Kiyosaki advocates and the Rich Dad Advisors advocate. You have a team of people helping you. Mm. You have a CPA. You have a, an, an attorney. Uh, you have a bookkeeper. You have a banker. They're all on your team. And you don't have to know everything about corporations and LLCs. You just need someone on the team mm -hmm. who's going to guide you in the right direction and make, make sure that you're protected into the future. There's some amazing insights. You don't need to know everything. You just need to know who to go to to get the right advice. That's essentially what we're saying. Right. And you need to be able to grow the business. You need to do what you're best at, which is was which is making the business happen mm -hmm. uh, and then relying on your team for the things that that they do best, which is uh, legal, accounting, banking, all of those sort of things. How do, you know, if somebody's looking to educate themselves um, prior to getting involved, and we've obviously revealed one of the, the key things here is to um, seek this sort of advice before beginning uh, your business journey. Um, is there a, another way for them to get information, maybe through some, some of the books that you've created? Well, the book Start Your Own Corporation uh, is a starter for setting up corporations and LLCs. That's that's the book I wrote. Robert Kiyosaki asked me to write the book in, in the year 2000, and four editions later, it's still selling. Mm. You know, we, can, we continue to update it because the law does change in this area. Yep. But Start Your Own Corporation, it, it's a good book to give you the basics, the foundational information you need. And with that, then you're better able to talk to your advisors on various issues. So um, some people just, they don't have time to read the book. They come straight to us and we can help them. 
Other people have read the book. A lot of people now, uh, Rick, are listening to audio. Yeah. And all these books are on audio tapes. And so a lot of people I talk to have listened to the audio. And uh, they go, gosh, I've heard this voice before. Because <laughs> we were... <laughs> And uh, they, they have a better foundation uh, for what we're doing. So it depends on what your listeners' strategy is. If they know they need an entity and want to get one set up right away, that's fine. If they want to understand the whole process and the reasons for why, uh, the book Start Your Own Corporation does go into that. Well, look, um, that's that's amazing insight for anybody who's starting or thinking about starting a business or even if you've started your journey, I'd definitely be reaching out to Garrett and asking him the right questions about uh, setting up the right legal structure for your organisation. Garrett, where can people find you to access all of these wonderful resources, your audios, your books and your personal assistance? Well, uh, our main website is corporatedirect.com, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of articles there and information, and, uh, you know, there's a checklist where if you want to get started right away, you can, you can do so. There's an 800 number. You can call up and set up a, a consult with one of the account representatives. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of information at Corporate Direct. Uh, we sell the books at Corporate Direct, but to be honest, for some reason, Amazon can sell them for less than I can as the author. So uh, <laughs> you, can, you can go to Amazon and get a great deal uh, on, on all the books that I've written. I've written six in the Rich Dad Advisor series and uh, three outside the series. Uh, so um, there's, there's a lot of information there. We also, Rick, have a newsletter. And once a month, we... we uh, inform our readers on various topics, because as we mentioned, this law is dynamic. It's changing. Uh, the LLC is a newer entity, and so there's new laws coming out defining uh, how the LLC works. And, and so we want to keep our clients updated on what's happening in the, in the world of asset protection. So we do offer the newsletter, which is free to get at corporatedirect.com. Mm -hmm. And when I look at the corporate, uh, corporatedirect.com website, under the shop, is that where I can access the audio versions? Or is yes. This, okay, fantastic. Well, look, I'm looking at the Corporate Direct website as we speak. Go ahead and add your email to join the newsletter. I'm, I'm fairly certain that there's going to be some nuggets of gold for you to download, access, and use in your own business. Garrett, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the My Future Business Show today. Well, thank you, Rick, and good luck to all of your listeners in their entrepreneurial activities. It's been fun having you on the call with us today. Now click on that big red subscribe button and make sure you leave us a comment, share us with your friends, and join the growing list of leading entrepreneurs who have enjoyed their time on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews.